Good afternoon, this is Steve Cap, I have JUF. So I'm going to make a, sta a video today on what Dad and my station look like. So we might give you some pointers on some things you might look at doing. But uh, there it is from afar. Uh, you see we've got the 991A, we've got the SWR meters and the computer of course. So I'll just kind of start uh, with my power, power plug. We use this little guy right here, it's called a trip light and it's got some protection in here uh, it gives us to verify polarity and everything but one of the things we do when I turn off my station is we do uh, we do turn this off and I normally unplug the power cord which goes over here to the uh, power supply the power works and we just normally do that just for safety so we'll unplug this one turn this one off and for the coaxial connections, we I've got a system here on the FM. We just disconnect this one, which goes into the uh, FM uh, SWR meter. And for the HF, we have this connection right here, which is pretty easy. This just disconnects here. That's a 90 degree fitting, and that disconnects the HF leg of the uh, FT991A. A lot of times we will leave it connected, but if we see storms and things like that coming, we will typically disconnect the uh, radio from the antennas. I've got two SWR meters. The first one's a CN901, that's for my HF. And then we've got the diamond, and diamond here. I'm not sure what the model number is on it. I'll post it in the bottom of the email. We use PowerWorks. Uh, and this is the power cord. One power cord goes to the 991A, which is this one. This one goes to the CB radio. And the CB radio is just a 929, nothing fancy going on. But uh, anyway, it works pretty good. And of course, uh, over here, what I usually do is I'll keep QRZ up while I'm talking. And then the other thing I'll do is I have another spreadsheet that I use. And on this spreadsheet, I have a ham roster. I'll show you. And on the ham roster, this has got all of the uh, guys that I make contacts with. I also have a call log that I enter into. I don't always update this, but the reason I keep this open is because this gives me the grid location. It also gives me some guidance on making calls and things. Um, just some little general things, exchange of information. I'm talking on a 991A, serial G27, or what, a 27. So this kind of helps me remember, you know, when you're making HF calls, it's, a, it's an exchange of information, your name, your location, the weather conditions, your equipment, your antenna, your microphone, things of that nature. So it's kind of a, a back and forth, uh, you know, on a cue. So this just helps me remember. Now on the radio, one of the things that's important is, is Zulu time. So we always have that set to Zulu time because when you log an entry, into QRZ, I had to learn this the hard way, I didn't know this, but on QRZ, let me get to QRZ real quick here, you actually enter the uh, uh, QSO, and of course I think it's got the Zulu clock right here, which is uh, Greenwich Mean Time. So what happens is, the reason this is important is because when you make a contact, if the other person confirms you, then the time has to be within 30 minutes of your confirmation and the frequency. Otherwise, they will not consider to confirm. And when you get to confirm, you'll get the star down here. And this is this is my call, call log. So I typically will get it in QRZ immediately, and then I'll go back and try to update the spreadsheet. But I don't always do. But the QRZ log has everything that I need. So as far as the antenna switches, uh, this switch here... This is the HF coming in, this goes to the radio. I've got a 10 meter, 6 meter, and then this is the dummy load down here. Now what happens on the 10 meter is it goes over to this switch. This is where the 10 meter antenna is. So I've got the CB going here and I've got the Yesu coming in here. So I'll put, I'll put a diagram, I've got a dry diagram on how all that works. And recently just added a uh, MFJ2, I think it's a 267 dummy load. So I've got that going on now. So now I can do HF transmissions and make videos and things for setting speech processors and things. Um, 
without having to get on the air. So that's the station. Uh, not a whole lot fancy going on. Of course, the last thing I forgot to show you that we got, of course, the 991A and the M100 microphone with the uh, uh, upper sideband bezel that we put on whenever we talk upper sideband. So that's what that looks like. And uh, that's it. That's the inside of the station. Uh, like I said, works pretty good. Got a place to put my bag there where I carry my computer in, uh, a couple of shelves and stuff. Uh, nothing else fancy going on. That's it. I'll go outside and get the antennas in. There they are, the antennas. This one here, this is my uh, Serio 27 and a half wave. It's connected to uh, right there, that's where the uh, base of the antenna is. We've got it on a Roan 30. And we've got it guided in three different directions so that we've got it covered with guys going down to the fence and we've also got guys on the uh, edges of the building. So that's the HF antenna up there. Then I've got a GP1 over here that I use for the FM and UHF. It's about maybe 25 feet up in the air. That little guy does real good getting into the repeaters. And over here, that's our 6 meter GP52. Uh, and we actually get, we made some contacts on that. We use Roan 30, Roan 30, uh, do, do, do. Roan 30 is what we use on both of our poles, or push up poles essentially. And as you scroll down, I'll show you the grounding over here. This is how we bring our cables out. We actually have a box that what we did, we drilled a four inch hole through the barn and what we did with this plastic box is we put these little watertight, well not watertight fittings, but fittings where you could insert the uh, coaxial connector through and then we kind of filled them up with a little bit of uh, little bit rags and stuff just to keep the moisture from coming in. And of course we've got the uh, wires going to the appropriate poles. Now the other thing we did is on the bottom of our poles what we did here is you notice the grounding right there. We have, I think we used number six gauge wire. You notice right here, see how that's grounded. We also used a special base that Roan provided us right here, and that's how we secured it. Now, what this cable does is there's another cable here, and what I have is we've got two eight foot grounding rods exactly about eight feet apart. And that's what we did. Both rods went down straight, and we have one. One's located about here, I guess. They're about eight feet apart. One of them is right there in this general area, and then there's another one over there by the air conditioner. So what we do is we run one wire to the uh, ground rod. We run. We've got this ground rod going into the station right here. And that also goes, we've got both ground rods tied together, so all this grounding is all tied together. I've got the pole, I've got the cable going into the station, and I've also got the other cable over here. All this is tied together. So essentially, I've got two ground rods, eight feet in the ground, fully buried below the surface. I've got a pole, I've got both poles tied to both ground rods, which are both ground rods are tied together, and then I run a ground wire into the station. So this is how you'll kind of see how we got it connected. So that's it right there. That's how we do it. I'll show you the other one here real quick. Nothing really special to look at, but just kind of gives you an idea of what I'm talking on. There we go right there. Serio 27 and a half wave 10 meter slash 11 meter. All right, let me go back in. I'll show you the grounding on it and uh, I'll go ahead and wrap this video up. Okay, so the gray box that you looked at, this is what is on the other side of it. It's about a four inch piece of PVC, and we've got three different coaxes coming in for the uh, UHF, VHF. HF uh, and 6 meter. So what we do is we actually have right here 
we have this grounding rod and we have these flexible sorry about that we have these flexible straps here that I got and what we do is we actually strap the base of the radio and the power supplies so that's rod right there goes down and it goes out doors to the eight foot grounding rods so that's how the grounding is done so thought you might find that interesting we don't have lightning surge protectors but we just never put them in typically we just unplug the coax because honestly with lightning surge protectors I've heard stories that they are no guarantee they're going to protect, protect your radio so that may not be the right answer but right now we just don't have them installed so anyway let me pull back out of here and uh, that'll be everything all right from KI5JUF Steve have a great afternoon and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video have a good day and a good weekend